Hey YouTube, I just wanted to go over how to become an Apple certified iOS technician and how to become an Apple certified Mac technician. This is something that's available to the public for a small fee if you can pass their exams. So looking at the certifications, and I'll post links in the description of this video on step by step what this all means, but basically they're, they're not saying this is a partnership, you know, this doesn't authorize you to do repairs on their behalf. It's simply validating that you have the skills to perform these tests and there are several that you do need to take um, there's a prerequisite test that i'll show you and then you can take what's called the acit and that stands for apple certified ios technician and i'll walk you through the process even though in the third party world this doesn't mean a whole lot to me it was valuable because then i could see what apple does you know the tools that they use the diagnostics that they use so i could better educate myself as well. So I did find value in this, even if I don't have access to these tools that they have. So to start off, you do need to create a tech ID. I'll post the website below where you do that. You just simply use your existing Apple ID, or you can create a new one. And then you'll use this ID to sign into Pearson view, which is where you'll actually take the tests. So moving on to those tests, um, the service fundamentals is a prerequisite. You have to take that first and pass it, I believe with an 80% or above. Again, I'll, I'll have all this, to, um, the links and descriptions below. So you have to take the service fundamentals. We'll go over what that entails. Now you don't have to take the ACIT and ACMT. The ACIT is the Apple certified iOS technician. That's the only one that I've done. I was kind of a little bit more interested in that. And we'll kind of go over the details of, of what's inside each of these tests as well. So looking at the prerequisite tests, so this is something you have to take before any of the others. It's kind of more about safety and ESD standards. So we're kind of just scrolling through here. Um, you do need to score above a certain percentage in each of the tests. Um, one thing I liked is customer experience. A lot of these things are, are pretty obvious. I would say if you're used to like a retail or a customer experience, um, like you're able to get these things even with guessing. ESD, I did have to do a little bit of research on, on this, electrostatic discharge, actual safety, definitely more involved with like batteries, how to take those out safely, that kind of thing. Troubleshooting, there are some diagnostics that Apple uses um, that we can learn a little bit more later. Product knowledge, and then moving on to the ACIT, this is more iPhone repair and Apple and Mac and Apple software based. So you need to score at least 80% above. So there's some troubleshooting if you're having some issues. Identifying different features in iOS, how to use certain apps, um, servicing the iPhone. Again, the big thing here is if you're really familiar with phone repair, you might be able to pass some of these tests. Um, but the thing is, Apple does use specialized repair um, tools. And to pass those tests, you need to score at least an 80%. You might be able to do it without the actual training. So this Apple Care Technician training, this is like college level training that anybody can actually purchase through Apple. And it's 299, I believe that gets you uh, one year and then you have to renew it the next year. Um, now they refer to this as Atlas. So this is the same training that the Apple employees at the Apple store receive when they learn about new phones. So if the iPhone 10 R was new, they'd go to Atlas using this training and be able to see complete teardowns, best practices, and the, the best way to perform that repair. And you actually have access to that. Now I've gone through Atlas and I found it really valuable. $300 is not a lot of money for a whole company per se, or even to gain that knowledge. Um, again, though, if you're a third party repair, you don't really have access to their specialized tools or diagnostic software, but this will at least allow you to pass this test um, and be able to answer those, those questions about the very specific tools that they use that are, are different than maybe a third party repair would use. So I'll have links in description below. I really enjoyed this whole experience. I did use Atlas. I could see how someone could pass without it if you are really repair savvy. Um, but I, you don't really learn a lot of the, the core Apple knowledge unless you do get this training. So please feel free to reach out in the comments if you have any questions. 
I'll, I'll try and provide like a, a PDF that maybe summarizes this a little bit more clearly, but it's $20 for each of the tests, you know, the service fundamentals, $20 for either the ACIT or the ACMT. And then at that point, once you pass, you can get a certificate in the mail and then you can call yourself an Apple certified technician. Um, but just remember, this does not authorize you in any way to perform repairs on their behalf. It's just simply validating your skills um, through Apple. So hopefully this has helped. I thought it was really interesting. And yeah, please reach out if you have any questions.